Hello everyone. Today we are going to cover grammar handout 4 all together and this handout is about relative clauses. Before you start watching this video, this is the handout that you need to find and you can find this handout on MetaDB student page or it will be uploaded on your Google Class pages. So let's start. In this handout, there are four topics to cover. First one is revision of relative clauses. So we will go over relative clauses. And then this is a new topic. We will talk about omission of relative clauses, how to omit relative clauses. And then we will learn a new pronoun, whose. And then we will learn another relative pronoun, where and how to use those new relative pronouns. So let's start with our first topic. So let's start with what was a relative clause. So relative clauses are used to define, describe or identify a noun or they give more information about a noun. You see a sentence, a complete sentence, in the example and it says the book which is about Japanese culture is very interesting as you can see the relative clause is underlined it starts with the pronoun and then verb and then the object so when we look at this sentence the thing that you need to see is that the book is our noun and in order to give more information describe or define this noun, I am using a relative clause or an adjective clause. Relative clause and adjective clause is the same thing. Or if you look at the second sentence, the girl who I met yesterday is on TV tonight. Again, the relative clause is underlined who I met yesterday and it is defining or giving more information about the noun the girl and then again on the line part is our relative clause or adjective clause so this is the part that we already covered in previous weeks we know that an adjective clause is a group of words which looks like a sentence because it has a subject and a verb but it cannot stand alone relative clauses should be attached to another sentence because it can be used as part of a sentence this is what we mean the bag that i bought yesterday was stolen the relative clause is underlined again that i bought or which i bought yesterday if you put this part this relative clause alone it it doesn't have a complete meaning that is why it should be defining or describing a noun that you use before it. So when we look at this relative clause, we see that I is our subject, I mean within the relative clause, I is the subject, both is the verb, and yesterday is the object, like some other regular sentences. But because we have the pronoun in the beginning, this is a relative clause and it is modifying a noun and it should be part of a main clause or a main sentence. As we said, it can only be used as part of a sentence. For example, if you look at in the last sentence, the nurse is my noun that I am describing. Nurse who treated my grandmother is in the office. So this relative clause, he who treated my grandmother is actually giving information about the nurse and and it cannot stand alone who treated my grandmother cannot stand alone so that is how you can understand that a clause is an adjective clause or a relative clause let's move on so when we say relative pronouns these are the pronouns that you need to think of who which and that we use who 
for people if you are describing or giving more information about people you use relative pronoun who if you are giving more information about things you use relative pronoun which and that is used for both people and things okay so these are the relative pronouns that we have covered so far now we know that relative pronouns can be used in two ways relative pronouns as the object and relative pronouns as the subject so what do we mean by this okay now we are going to cover what is relative pronouns as the subject and then we will go on with the second one so when we say when we use relative pronouns as the subject this is what we mean who which and that are the subject of the relative clause okay not the main sentence but the relative clause and this is the key part actually they are followed by a word okay after the pronoun i need to see a verb it could be in any tense okay but i should directly see the verb after the pronoun and this is actually the new topic the omission of relative clauses so the pronouns in these sentences if you are using these pronouns as the subjects of relative clauses you cannot omit them okay so let's have a look at the examples children are unhappy about the parents who sets limits so in here who or that is my relative pronoun and set is my verb and then this pronoun relative pronoun is acting like the subject of sentence it is in the place of the subject so that is why we think that it is like the subject of our relative clause and if you look at just the afterwards you will see the verb directly it tells me that this is my this is in this sentence the pronoun is in subject position that is why i would say that relative pronoun is the subject in this sentence and we are modifying the noun parents which parents who set limits okay this is how we understand if it's a subject relative pronoun or in object position let's have a look at more examples children don't get enough exercise these children watch tv all day so in that we have two different sentences but they have a common point children so i will give more information about children okay so this is how i link two sentences children with children who watch tv all day don't get enough exercise so in here these children are combined in in two sentences i'm looking at the pronoun who and after that i see the verb directly watch and then i understand that in here the relative pronoun is used like subject okay second example children shouldn't watch programs these programs include violence so two different two, two separate sentences but a common point programs so i will give more information about programs children shouldn't watch programs which programs which are that include violence so here instead of these programs i'm using which and that and i'm checking the rule yes there is directly verb after the pronoun and then i decide that this is this pronoun is used as a subject in my relative clause okay so basically the rule is if you have the verb directly after the pronoun this is a subject relative pronoun and you cannot omit which or that okay you have to use either which or that in these kind of sentences now we will look at the second relative pronouns how to use them in relative clauses this time they will be the object of relative clauses this is what we mean relative pronouns who which or that 
will be the objects of the relative clause, okay? Because we will have a separate subject in the relative clause. That is why this time these pronouns will act like the objects. Again, uh, they are followed by something, but this time, first I will see a subject and then the verb. Okay, this is the main difference between subject relative clause and object relative clause. And another topic that we need to learn, new topic in this video, is the omission. Omission of object relative clauses. If you see that that pronoun is the object of relative clause, you can omit it. Okay, by omitting, we mean that you may not use that pronoun. You don't change the meaning, you just change the grammar, but it is still meaningful and it is still complete. For example, the people we visited yesterday were very nice. Who, whom or that, these are my pronouns. And after the pronoun, I see a subject, we, and then the verb. Okay? If there is a subject after the pronoun, then this pronoun is now the object of my relative clause. Okay? So, if there is another subject after the pronoun, then you can omit this pron these pronouns, who, that, or which. That is why these pronouns are in parentheses. Okay? Let's have a look at some more examples. I liked the woman I met her at the meeting last night. So we are obviously give more information about woman and her. These are the common points of those two sentences. So I will say I like the woman, which woman, who or that I met at the meeting last night. So who or whom is my relative pronoun. I have the subject after the pronoun. And then I have the verb. Then I decide that, okay, this is an object relative clause and I can omit these relative pronouns and it is still meaningful and complete. Another example, programs should be broadcast late. Educators find these programs unsuitable for children. So two separate sentences, one common point, programs and these programs. So this is the noun that I'm going to give more information. Programs should be, should be broadcast late. Which programs? Programs that educators find unsuitable for children should be broadcast late. So in here, which or that is my relative pronoun because the noun programs is things. That's why I use which or that. And then I have a different subject, educators, and then I have the verb. So, in here, relative pronouns are my object. So, it means that I can omit, I may not use those pronouns in my sentences. Okay? Now, we have an exercise. This is exercise three in your handout. You need to read each sentence and leave out or omit the relative pronoun if it is possible. So, in this exercise, you first find the relative pronoun, okay? And then, look at the sentence. After relative pronoun, do you have directly a verb or do you have a subject? If you have directly a verb, it means it is a subject relative pronoun and there is no omission. But, if you have a subject after relative pronoun, it means that it's an object relative clause and you can omit the relative pronoun. Okay? Now, I want you to pause the video, go to exercise 3, underline the pronouns, decide if they are subject or object relative pronouns, and then do the omission if it is possible. Okay? Okay. So, in this exercise, we are deciding if we can omit the relative pronoun or not. Let's look at the first exercise, a first sentence. I didn't want to wear the dress, which dress, that my mother gave me. 
That is my relative pronoun here. After pronoun, I have a subject and then a verb. And I decide that this is an object relative pronoun. And the rule says that if the pronoun is an object position, you can omit that. So, it is okay to omit the pronoun that. Second sentence, the book, which book? The book that I'm reading was written by Dan Brown. So in here, after pronoun that, I have a subject and then a verb. So I know that this is object relative pronoun. I mean, pronoun is an object position. And it means I can omit this relative pronoun. And I can say the book I'm reading was written by Dan Brown. Number three, the book, which has a yellow cover, is a murder mystery, which is my relative pronoun, after which I have directly the verb has. So this tells me that this pronoun is subject. So in subject relative pronouns, we cannot omit the pronoun. So this would be a no, not possible to omit. Okay, number four, that this place here, that is my pronoun, this place is the verb. So again, no omission. Number five, the steak that I order, after the pronoun that, there is a subject. So this is an object relative clause. It means that we can omit that. That is the lucky man who won the lottery. Who is my relative pronoun? Directly verb after the pronoun. So this is in subject position. So there is no omission in this sentence. Does the salary that you earn motivate you? Salary, which salary that you earn? After the pronoun that, we have a subject. So this is an object relative clause. And it means that I can omit the pronoun. I bought a copy of the book that John wrote. That is my relative pronoun, John, subject, and verb. So, in here, pronoun is used as the object, so it means that I can omit this that. And the last one, I don't know the man, who your sister married, who is my pronoun, your sister is the subject, and then married verb. So, we have a subject, it means that the pronoun is an object position, it means that we can omit the pronoun who, okay? This is how you need to do the exercises. Let's go on with our third topic using whose in relative clauses. This is another relative pronoun and it is used to solve pos show possession. Possession means that belonging, okay? And it is always followed by a noun. This is how you can understand, how you can show possession, actually. And it cannot be omitted. Okay? Now, let's have a look at those sample sentences. The manager has to do his own typing. His secretary resigned two weeks ago. So, in here, his secretary is showing us the possession, his. And then we have the manager in here so these are the points that we need to combine so I would say the manager which manager whose secretary resigned two weeks ago has to do his own typing so in here his secretary his turns into whose and then this is the noun secretary I use it after the pronoun whose more examples the dog is over there the dog's or its owner lives next door. So possession is not only used with its, her, his, my. You can also use this possessive s to show it. So it's about the meaning. Look at the meaning. If there's possession, you can change. You can use it with the pronoun who. So the dog, which dog, whose owner lives next door, is over there. So in this sentence, you can understand that whose is not only used with people, you can also use it with things or, yeah, you can use it with things too. 
second sentence, the little girl has said, the little girl's or her doll was lost. So the point, the noun that I'm giving more information about is the little girl. So little girl whose doll was lost is said. So doll is my noun here after whose I have to use this noun. Third one, the woman is coming out. Her car is a BMW. So her car, her is this woman. So this is the noun that I'm going to give more information. The woman whose car is a BMW is coming out tonight. Okay, so don't forget to use a noun after whose pronoun whose plus a noun. Now, let's go to exercise five. We are combining two sentences using whose. Please pause the video, do the exercise, and then we will check the answers all together. In this exercise, you have to find the, the noun that you are giving more information and you are combining it with whose and plus a noun. Okay, this is the rule. So I have a friend whose house is in Barcelona. So her house and a friend, this is how you combine the two sentences. The student failed the course. His attendance was bad. His attendance showing me the possession. So this possession belongs to the student. The student whose attendance was bad failed the course. Number three, the teacher went to China. I took her course. Her course is the teacher's course. So this is how I link the sentences. The teacher, which teacher, whose course I took last year, went to China. Number four, I don't like to spend time with people their only social activity is texting. So, their refers to people. So, we show the possessiveness. I don't like to spend time with people whose only social activity is texting. And the last one, his car and the man are, are, come, are points to link. I called the man, which man, whose car I crushed yesterday. Okay? This is how you would do the exercise. Let's move on to our last topic, relative clauses with where. We know that where is used to show place, okay? For places, we are using relative pronoun where. For example, let's have a look at this sentence. I missed the hotel. We stayed at that hotel or there during our vacation. So in this sentence, hotel is the place that we stayed, okay? This is how you describe or identify this place. And if you want to write this with a pronoun, a relative pronoun, your pronoun is where. And this is how you link it. I miss the hotel. Which hotel? Where we stayed during our vacation. So if you are defining this hotel as a place, your pronoun is where. Where is your first option to use for places, okay? But if you want, you can use it with preposition plus which. They have the same meaning, but we are giving the same meaning by a different grammar. So again, the same sentence we discussed earlier. I miss the hotel. We're at that hotel or there during our vacation. So... If we want to if we want to use it with where, this is how you would write it. I miss the hotel where we stayed. But if you want, you can use it with a preposition plus which. In here, while we are deciding for the preposition, look at the sentence. In here it says at that hotel. So it signals me that in here the preposition should be at because it is used in the original sentence okay now I'm looking at my second option with which I keep the main part same I mean main clause the same I miss the hotel instead of where I'm using at which we stayed during our vacation so they have the same meaning but with a different grammar so if you are using where that's okay no preposition 
But if you are using which, you have to use it with a preposition so that I can understand you are describing the place, describing the noun as a place. Okay, this is the key point. So another example, the building is very old. He lives in that building or there. Here, in that building is is giving us the meaning of a place, okay? He is living in a place. We are not modifying the building as as a concrete place, as a concrete structure, okay? It's the place that he lives in. So, this is my first option. I can use, I can make it with where. The building where he lives is very old, okay? Or... I will, if I want to use it with which, I have to use the preposition, and it is here in the original sentence. This time I will use in. The building in which he lives is very old. This is another alternative. And the last one would be, you can separate the preposition and the relative pronoun. So if you are separating them, this preposition goes to the end of the relative clause, okay? And then you still have the option to use which or that, but these are optional because this is the pronoun, the relative pronoun is object relative pronoun, okay? So basically, to describe a place or to describe a place, you have three options. You can use where, preposition plus which, or relative pronoun plus how about this? Preposition at the end of the sentence. Okay? So from now on, we will try to follow this, these rules while we are rewriting the sentences. Two sample sentences. First one is, the bar in Barcelona is still there. I met my wife in that bar. In that bar, so this is the place that they met. So if I want to rewrite it with where, we would say, Bar in Barcelona, where I met my wife, is still there. Or, in that bar, in is my preposition. So, if I'm using which, I would say in which. If you want, use the preposition before the pronoun. If you don't want, use it at the end of the relative clause. Okay? And you can still omit this, that, or which. Second example, we visited a house. My father was born in this house. In this house tells me that you are describing this house as a place, okay? So that is why I am planning to use it with the pronoun, relative pronoun, where. So if we, we rewrite it, we would say, we visited the house where my father was born, or in which my father was born, or that which my father was born in okay don't forget this preposition at the end of relative pronoun if you forget it this sounds this is like you are describing the house not as a place but as an object okay we will come to this later so this is the last part that we are going to discuss because this is important this is the part that you need to pay attention okay we should pay attention because in some sentences, it is hard to choose the correct relative pronoun. Especially, there are some words like city, store, home, town, apartment, okay? Those words might be defined or described as a place or as an object. So, while we are deciding which pronoun to use, we should check the function of the word, not the meaning. By function, we mean if the relative pronoun is the subject of the relative clause, object of the relative clause, or it is giving information about the place. Okay? So, to make it more clear, let's have a look at the sample sentences. The word house is used in all sentences in the examples, but in each sentence, it has a different function. So, this is the first, first example. She lives in a house. The house has three 
balconies. In here, the house is my subject. So if I rewrite this, I would say she lives in a house which has three balconies. The house is not described as a place, okay? It's just like a building. But if you look at the second one, you have a similar meaning, but this time it is the object of the relative clause. So the house was destroyed in the fire. My grandfather had built it in 1880. So in here, the house, which house, which my grandfather had built in 1880, was destroyed in the fire. So in here, this, in here, that or which is the object of this relative clause. But if you look at the last sentence, she lives in a house, people watch a lot of TV there. This there or in that house shows me that I'm describing this house as a place. And at this point, my relative pronoun should be where okay she lives in a house where people watch a lot of tv so if you have these kind of confusing words to describe with a relative pronoun look at the function okay is it the subject of the relative clause object of the relative clause or it is giving you information about the place now go to exercise six in here actually you are trying to see the difference between the functions of those relative pronouns. So fill in the blanks with where or which, depending on the function of relative clause, okay? Please pause the video, do the exercises, and then let's check the answers all together. Okay, in question one, the city I was born has a lot of parks. So the city is the object, subject, or the place. So in order to decide which pronoun to use, I would say, for example, in the original sentence, it should be something like this. This is the city. I was born in this city, right? The in this city part would be the part that is describing the city as a place. So I would say the city where I was born. I don't like cities. What kind of cities? Which have a lot of factories. In here, this is the subject of the relative clause. That is why I used which. Number three, I like to shop at stores. Which stores? Stores. Which sell products from different countries. Again, store is not defined or described as a place. It is the subject of my relative clause. Number four, a department store is a store. Okay. You can find all kinds of goods or products there. Actually, this is the, the, the missing or secret pronoun, a secret word there. So this time, store is described as a place. So I would say where you can find all kind of goods. Number five, I have a photograph of the home. Which home? Where I grew up. So normally you would say I grew up in that house or in this home. So I am describing this home as a place. That is why I used where. She wants to rent the apartment. Which apartment? which or that she lost, she saw last Sunday, okay? Apartment is not described as a place. It is just the subject or object of my relative clause. Number seven, you can see the whole city from the tower, which tower, mm -hmm. which is 300 meters tall. This is the subject of my relative clause. Tower is not as a place, but as a subject. And the last one, we could see the whole city from the tower. Which tower? Where we stood. So this time, tower is the place we stood in this place, okay? Or in the tower. So we would say 
the tower is described as the place. So we will say where. Okay. So this is the end of our lesson. Now this is your homework from grammar handout four. These are the ones that we skipped during the lesson. So go to grammar handout four. Do the exercises four, seven, eight, nine, and ten. The answer key will be provided later. Okay. Good luck, everyone. Have a nice day.